boom, 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 boom. What's up, people? First of all, I'd like to apologize for not having been able to upload anything yesterday, which was Friday, because I had two sort of big assignments to hand in, two essays that I had to just wrap up and and actually hand in in that day. So yeah, I was, even though I had a free day, I was pretty hard at work, so couldn't really upload or play anything at all, sadly. But it's Saturday now. I've done my work, now it's time to relax and play a bit and luckily for us, or at least for me, a new visual novel actually came out because I've been kind of looking for a new one to play and this one Z seemed fairly interesting. Now I do have to warn because I know that some people aren't really that fan of horror games in a sense but this is a visual novel so it's not like I guess normal horror games. I think mainly it's just gonna be have like a horror setting like the story is probably gonna have something that has horror elements in it and whatnot and yeah but I don't think it's gonna be like crazy jump scares right in your face or anything along those lines but yeah I'm still I mean this is still a pretty unique um, visual novels you know most of them probably are like stuff like Sakura dating sims whatnot and I love visual novels that are a bit different like I love the Fault series I'm hopefully gonna love this one which is actually called Sound of Drop Fall into Poison and a unique aspect of this game is that it actually has a lot of different endings like uh, uh, 30 in total I think there's actually a list dedicated to the amount of endings that they are so according to this I've actually never checked this out there are wow so many bad endings so there are four true endings and then three by three four five six seven eight nine ten thirty about thirty bad endings that's kind of a lot so I'm not sure how that is uh, gonna pan out but yeah, I think we should just start playing and if, whenever we hit a bad ending, I mean, usually with these types of games that have a lot of different endings, I try to explore every single one of them and showcase all of them to you guys as well. So I guess towards the end, maybe I'm just, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this. Like if I get a true ending very fast and or immediately, then I'm probably going to roll that way and then do separate videos or at least yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but because 30 different endings is kind of a lot, right? So it's actually, wait, it's 9, I counted wrong. So there's 27, 31 endings in total, but yeah. It's a lot, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do it, but we'll figure it out along the way. I mean, we're starting the game only just now, so there's probably not gonna be an ending just yet, and the, unless it's one of those endings where like, yeah, you made the first immediately the wrong choice, so you're dead. Bad ending. Could be one of those as well, but then I'll just... I guess I'll just flash right back onto the previous choice and make the opposite one, of course. But yeah, we'll figure it out along the way. Enough babbling, enough random talking. Start! Before she realized it, the girl was standing before an imposing door. The girl occasionally came to Manta Aquarium alone. She watched the manta rays, she watched the jellyfish, and finally, she decided it was time to go home. Where is this? She had her doubts, but there should be nothing else here except for the aquarium. She assured herself that she had probably wandered off onto a side path. The door before her had a large padlock hanging from it, just as she had heard. It was unlocked and merely dangling there. The girl drew in a deep breath. Being locked would usually mean that it was a place she wouldn't enter. Being open just meant that a staff member had forgotten to lock it. So going in was out of the question. Or is it? Her curiosity peaked. She was past the point of persuasion, her imagination ran wild, and her mind raced at the prospect of what might lie beyond the door. Just for a little bit, oh you nosy girl, you're gonna regret this. She opened the door and saw lots of glass tanks. 
Several types of fish hailing from the deep seas. From football fish, is there actually such a thing? A football fish? Never heard of that. But then again, they're like... I almost want to say millions, but I'm not even sure if that's accurate. But there's a shit ton of different fish uh, in the sea, of course. Because the sea is pretty damn big, of course. So, yeah. And oarfish, fish. The pelican eels and barrel eyes were swimming about. Why isn't this an exhibit? She thought it over, wondering why this would be in a closed off area. Behind her, the door shot on its own. Uh oh. The, door, uh, the girl spaced out, staring at the deep sea fish swimming about. She would leap from the tank and swim in mid-air. The entirety of the room was the fish and their ocean. Though it was an unnatural occurrence, the girl treated it as quite normal. Hmm, wasn't there originally a deep sea fish booth that was shut down? Uh oh. She suddenly remembered, at that moment, her surroundings were dyed a deep red. The water in her tanks, the fluorescent lights, all of it was red. The girl's vision also became red. When she opened her eyes, the girl was back in her own room. It was well into the night. She couldn't remember how she had gotten home after all of that. But more importantly, she had a bad feeling about something else. It isn't red here. She became aware of how hard it suddenly was to breathe. No matter how hard she gasped, she was unable to get oxygen into her body. Like the fish who couldn't breathe anywhere but in the water. She couldn't breathe unless she was inside that red color. She was convinced. On impulse, she threw open the window, leaned out, and the thrust of uh, and a thrust and thrust a hand outside she couldn't inhale the wind flooding her room. She could only smell its milky, unpleasant scent. More! At that moment, the girl's body was tossed into the air. For just a second, her body seemed to float like a fish in the sea. Her room was on the 12th floor of her apartment building. In her fading consciousness, the girl watched her blood flow endlessly from her body. It's red! Only then could she breathe. Now, everything would be fine. The girl smiled. The full moon in the night sky smiled too. Yeah, things are starting to get freaky already. Drip, drip. The sound of falling drops. The moon was concealed behind the clouds, and all of the lights in the town were covered in water. The sound of it, uh, the sound of it, the only thing left to resonate. She couldn't tell whether it was hot or cold, merely that the humid air was encircling her. Drip, drip. Wherever they were falling to, wherever they were coming from, the drops just continued to trickle out. That single drop. I stopped it with both hands. The sound of that solitary red, red drop. Oh God. I regret putting this game in full screen. Oh God. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Phew, I was expecting something, you know, scary to possibly pop up, but you never know. Everything's fine and happy, for now. Himeno, or at least there's an urban legend that goes like that. Mayumi, talking about Mantum Aquarium again? That's your new thing, isn't it? <laughs> what, what happened there? It's like she just fell on, uh, or sank from her knees. I don't even know how to call it, but that didn't seem like a natural human movement, you know? While stuffing her lunch into her mouth, uh, Tamagawa Himeno, or Himeno spoke, her eyes sparkling. 
I had no idea which point in the story got her so excited. That's right. Isn't this the scariest part? That the girl jumped to her death, smiling, after coming back from Manton Aquarium. It's pretty bad. Yet you don't seem the least bit scared, Himeno. That's not true. I've got chills running down my spine. Someone who's got chills running down her spine wouldn't be eating a pastry so cheerfully. <laughs> Someone who's got chills running down her spine wouldn't be eating a pastry so cheerfully. And hey, that's my meatball! During a break in the conversation, Himeno steal a side dish from my bu uh, boxed lunch. Hmm, this minced meat from growing calves and little piglets. It's the best. Oh god, is that what, what meatballs are made from? That's why it's always better not to know, you know? It's just, you don't want to know what some of the things that you actually eat are actually really made from and what they actually consist of because then you might sometimes think like, oh god, did I really eat that? But okay, growing calves and little piglets. I mean, I guess we eat grown-up pigs and grown-up cows as well so it doesn't really matter does it really matter that they're like little i guess i don't know it just when they're little i guess they're more cute in a sense so you're more inclined to be like oh my god poor little piglet poor little little calf but you don't go poor pig or poor uh, poor cow you got eaten why do you have to put it like that jeez why do you have to make me lose my appetite? I'll give you the rest of it. Alright, I'll take it. Om nom nom. Imero takes the rest of the meatballs from my lunch with, ama with amazing rhythm. The reason that I, uh, Nakanobe Mayumi, lo lost my appetite wasn't because uh, of Himeno's story scared me. Manton Aquarium and I are connected in a way that I'd rather not think about. Of course, Himeno has no idea about that connection. If she knew, she'd never mention Manton Aquarium around me again. At the same time, I've been afraid that this thing might cause Himeno to stop talking to me. Himeno is pretty much my only friend. Aww. It isn't that I haven't talked to anyone since entering junior high, just that the only person I can actually call a friend is Himeno. Seriously, I think this whole mountain aquarium rumor obsession is getting to be a bit much. Maybe there's so many rumors though, like that there's man uh, that there's a man's ghost in the th tanks, that the deep sea fish booth is only open on a full moon, that the water changes into blood, or that you can hear crying from behind the tanks. Uh that earlier one goes with this one also. No, that's fine. You don't need to say anymore. I say firmly, causing Himeno to make a sour face. Soon after, Himeno changes the subject, first to a TV drama that aired the night before, then to some cute fake nails with cats on them she found in a magazine. She then talks about a classmate who was dating a boy from a nearby private school alighting on one of the uh, one subject before quickly changing to the next. Normally, the subject of Matt and Aquarian shouldn't have popped up again. Anyway, getting back to what we were talking about earlier, god dang it, Himeno, drop it! Huh? What exactly are we getting back to? Good Mayumi, deny. Matt and Aquarian, damn it. I looked into it, and this Sunday will be a full moon. Huh? That was all I could say, the rest of my words unable to come out. So we should go and see if the rumors are true or not. Are you crazy, Himeno? But, but I know you aren't interested in stuff like urban legends, Mayu, but next week we'll start preparing for the end of the semester and I won't be able to hang out with you. Lately we haven't gone anywhere together, have we? Aww, how can we say no to a face like that? It's pretty hard. If the full moon was next Sunday, I'm sure Himeno wouldn't have said anything. But I suspect because it happens to be this Sunday and next week happens to be our exam, she's chosen Mountain Aquarium. I know that I'm not hiding my confusion or my hesitation very well. 
Even so, Himeno turns her carefree grin my way. Since it's an aquarium, even if the rumors aren't true, we can still have fun, right? Well, that's true. Usually, anywhere I go with Himeno, I have fun. Whether or not we'd have fun was not what I was worried about. By the way, Mayu, in the east building of Manton Aquarium, they have a Hagen, Hagen Dots. As in, the eat-in restaurant? They had closed up at one point, but it looks like they're reopening for a limited time. Really? Really? They have the cookies and cream flavor you like too, Mayu? Of course I hesitate, but in the end, that settles it. Of course, we'll, we'll, we'll set aside our fear of the aquarium for uh, cookies and cream. Then, we'll go. As long as we definitely get some cookies and cream. Saying you have no money because you did too much shopping is out of the question. I know. After all, I'm something of a glutton myself. Fine, fine. In the end, we settle on mats and aquarium and ice cream for Sunday. Since I have already received my reward money from moving on to the next grade, I don't need to worry about my allowance. Still, it's been five years. Did you say something, Mayu? No, no, nothing. I bite my tongue, covering the words that had carelessly spilled out. I'm looking forward to the aquarium. It's probably about ten years, or it's been. I'm looking forward to the cookies and cream. It's probably been about ten years. That's not true. It's the truth. That's the only thing I'll eat there. Himena goes, you little, as she playfully stretches my cheeks. The end of lunch chimes sounds, and Himeno goes back to her own seat. If it's with Himeno, I'll be fine. That's what I told myself at the time. In reality, however... Dun dun dun, the sound of drop. Fall into the poison. Sunday is three days after that. The day I promised to go with Himeno to Manton Aquarium has arrived. We are to meet at noon at the Manton Cho station. As is customary for me, I arrive 30 minutes early. Leaning against the pillar, I do nothing but space out. Tons of people ba pass before me. Manton is really crowded on days off. Even so, there aren't really that many families or groups of students. Everyone around me uh, uh, appearing to be adu adults. Because of that, I quickly begin to feel uneasy. Within this crowd, I am alone. Inexplicably, my head begins to hurt. I wonder if Himeno will be here soon. I mutter to myself, then look at my shoes. Deep blue sandal boots. That were, that were this year's newest product. When mom and I had stopped off at the department store on Saturday, she bought them for me after some coaxing on my part. They were far from what you'd call high quality, but they were still a bit pricey on a junior high schooler's allowance. I'm not usually the type to beg, but I couldn't take my eyes off of these boots. My mom bought them with almost no resistance, saying, you're going out of town, so you need to look your best. I like both their form and their color, and found them a better fit for the summer season than anything else. There's gotta be a pretty significant meaning be behind the story of the boots, right? Because why else would they explain why she acts that she has like a a bond with the boots, that she abs absolutely loves it and whatnot? There's gotta be something happening with it later. I take my cell phone out and check the time. There's still 15 minutes to go until we're uh, to meet. Since Himuno is always 3 minutes later than the time we established, I've got about another 20 minutes. I finished reading my paperback on a train, so I have nothing to kill time with. If she's always 3 minutes late, then shouldn't you meet 3 minutes before you actually want to meet? Like, let's meet at 3.27, you know? That would solve that whole problem. 
there's nothing I can do about it, so I decide to keep myself from boredom by watching the people pass by. If I don't keep myself distracted, horrible thoughts will revive in my mind. I'm always worrying about what will happen if I'm late though. It had actually been about a month and a half since Himeno and I had gone out. We always talked at school, but rarely spent time together afterwards. Anyone who saw us probably thought we were opposites. Outings like this aside, I often spent my days off at home. When I was in elementary school, our family would go out often, but lately, that's been limited to dining out on Saturdays. So when I'm asked to do when I, uh, what I do when I stay at home, I usually just say I do nothing. Doing homework and watching TV is stuff that seems pretty common to me. On the other end of the spectrum is Himeno, who goes out regularly. I often hear stories of when she went to karaoke on weeknights or about how she traveled out of town on Sundays. She's a member of an active sports club and often hangs, uh, wants to hang out with them afterwards. Going out of town on the already limited days we have off tends to make me think, even if it's a day to rest, I don't feel rested at all. In other words, something like this is a difference between Himeno and I. Without much common ground between us, why we became friends is... <gasps> Suddenly, the light fades from my vision. It wasn't just that it had become dark, but that I had the sensation of being unable to breathe. Uh-oh, again. But rather than sweating it, I get a little mad. <sighs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hearing my wordless protest, Himeno pulled her hands away. Uh, I get playing the who am I game while covering someone's eyes, but covering someone's mouth too was just like Himeno. When I puff out my cheeks and object, Himeno just smiles at me. It's because you were staring into space, Mayu. Uh, that's a pretty weird thing to do, though. Cause it's exactly as uh, Mayumi said, like, it's one thing to like, sneak up behind someone and close their eyes and be like, guess who? That's one thing, yeah, and you're like, yeah, okay, that's pretty normal. But then to actually close their mouth too, that makes it feel like you're kidnapping that person or something. Or that person that, who that happens to must feel like, what the hell is going on? Am I being kidnapped? Or at least that would be my thought process. Oh, instead of apologizing, he made a blue on the nape of my neck. Without thinking, I made a weird sound. Embarrassed, I looked around two or three times, but the pedestrians walking by seemed un uh, unperturbed and didn't even look our way. The culprit who had, uh, who had surprised me moves in front of me before I realize it. You're mean, Himeno. <laughs> but I got to hear something good. No, you didn't. Moreover, you're... As I say that, I check the time on my smartphone. It's 3 minutes to noon, our agreed upon meeting time. It's not time yet. How rare. That's rude. Jeez. I'll make you uh I'll make you make a weird noise again. Saying that, Himeno opens and closes uh, closes her fingers in small swift grasping motions. At times like this, I know I had better change the subject, or get messed uh, with him uh, with by Himeno again. Oh, by the way, did you buy a new one? You mean my necktie? Yes I did. I thought I should get one to match my shorts. You and I haven't hung out since around midterms, Mayu. If I buy something today, I'll really be out of money. What about the aquarium? You're still set on finding out about the urban legends then? Of course, that's my number one goal. But as usual, I can't count the things I want to do on just one hand. Okay, okay, I get it. As long as I eat cookies and cream, that is absolute. I haven't forgotten. Anyway, Mayu, aren't your sandals new? Himeno says as she looked at my feet, talking about three times as fast as she does in class. Yeah. Nice, aren't they? They're super cute! How cool! 
I want a pair too. Nope, they will be too similar. And these are the only pair of sandals I have for the summer. Talking like this, it put me at ease. Unlike myself, who is childish, Himeno knows a lot about fashion and trends. Even here in Manton, it seems like she blends in. Most importantly, by being with Himeno and constantly chatting, I no longer feel lonely. Oh yeah, Himeno, why did you bring such a huge bag? I'm glad you asked. With a hee hee, Himeno opens the Boston bag she had let sink down from her shoulder. A variety of things come out, such as a flashlight, insect repellent, a simple blanket, a first aid kit, matches, and snacks like chocolate and cookies. What is all this? Himeno, where do you plan on going? Ignoring the twitch developing in my face, Himeno thumbs her chest. Jeez, to the aquarium! But since we're investigating urban legends, we should at least have some supplies. Rather than an investigation, the equipment she has reminds me more of, an go uh, of going camping in the mountains. The snacks and blankets aside, where, uh, where, uh, where in a city this size would we need insect repellent or a flashlight? I keep those feelings to myself and just smiled. I let out a breath that is half, uh, half exasperated, half amused. I don't get sick of being with Himeno. Whether Himeno is aware of my exasperated gaze or not, she starts to take something out, then quickly shoves it back in. She gives me a smile, implying some secret. Oh, no wait, it's too soon for you to see that. Aww, what were you about to pull out? I'm not telling. Upon saying that, Himeno quickly loses the, uh, closes the bag. The way I see it, it is a wonder she fit all the supplies she had out just a moment ago. I wonder where it's all being stored. By the way, no club today? I ask with the underlying question of whether or not today is a day off for the club. At my question, Himeno averts her eyes. Nope, probably no club today. Really? Giving a brief answer, I start walking. Upon hearing her reply, I immediately understand it as, ah, she skipped it again, but not wanting to ruin the merry mood, I merely quicken my pace. I'm not in any clubs, but even I know it's not good to skip. Speaking honestly, I want her to show up for a club, as she seems to be respected even by students from other schools. Coming here together like this makes me equally guilty though. Once I get thinking, I don't usually stop so the conversation shifts to a, uh, to a ramen shop that catches my eyes. Oh, Mayu, do you want to get lunch? Huh? You caught that? Oh, yes, ramen noodles. Uh, feeling as if she has, uh, she has seen right through me, we head into a nearby coffee shop. I thought it was a ramen shop. It is apparently famous following its coverage in a magazine for a sandwich that was overflowing with vegetables. I say apparently because on excitedly finding, uh, on finding the restaurant, Himeno shared this. Compared to a hamburger shop, this place is a bit intimidating and trendy to me, but since I'm with Himeno, it doesn't bother me. Shoving the roast chicken sandwich with extra olives that I ordered into my mouth, the unease I have been feeling disappears. In contrast, uh, contrast to my fervor, Himeno eats her avocado and shrimp sandwich in small bites. Well then, about our plans for today. Himeno starts in as soon as we have finished eating. We'll start with the aquarium. No matter what, that's the main thing. So we'll look into the old man ghost and the closed off deep sea fish booth rumors. After that, we'll go to the shops and finally have some ice cream. I think it's better to go get the ice cream and cookies first. If you eat two times, you'll mess up your stomach and get fat. Oh wow, calm down Himeno. You won't be able to wear a bathing suit, dang. Ah, Himeno, it's not fair for you to put it that way. It isn't fair. Himeno is in the exercise club, so she will be fine. But for someone like me who doesn't exercise enough, 
It makes me stop and think. Having said I wanted to go to the pool, it is all the more important. Okay, then we'll stick with my plan. That was a delicious meal! Urged on by Himeno, I decided to leave the ice cream shop for another time. Talking about silly things together, we leave the station behind. As opposed to the station's excellent cooling system, the city streets have a peculiar humidity and heat to them that envelops our bodies. The beginning of July. Summer has only just begun, and I can already tell it's going to be a tough one. We weave our way through the crowd until we are 10 minutes away from the station, finally ending up in front of a skyscraper. The building is a symbol for the people, uh, uh, for the people of Manton, a combined facility for commerce, what you might call a fashion building in reference to the business it contains. Manton is a town known as a place people go for amusement. If you really want to have a good time, they have a movie theater, arcades, and several shops. Do you need to have money? Of course. <gasps> Fun costs money. Because of that, young men and women are more numerous than boys and girls. In this town of people older than us, Himeno scans the panels for each floor without fear, saying, Aquarium is... People are concentrated around the panels. Dang, look at a tall building. Uh, of little help to Himeno and trying to take up as little space as possible, I leave the search to her and gaze up at the building. I look up and up, but at the top of the uh, but the top of the building is so far, I think my neck will snap. That's magnificent. This building was built not long after I was born. It had been finished before I could walk, but the first and only time I came here was in elementary school. The instant I think back on my first visit, my head begins to hurt. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. No. I have to try not to think about it. Those are things from long ago. Things from the past. Things that are done. I can do nothing but deal with the pain that feels as if something is pressing against the inside of my skull. I finally hear Himeno calling me in a loud voice. The elevator's this way, come on! I push away my headache and step through the automatic door. The information at the entrance and the placement of the crane game uh, are exactly the same as that day, giving me a, slight bad, a slightly bad feeling. I'm beginning to think that I might freaking regret playing this game. Mayumi Himeno Sayo Sakuragi, I don't know who that is. Miku Minato Riko Sago Numori Namara Kenji Hiyoshi Mari Nakanobo Wales Free Willy Dang. Well, 
after that awesome opening, I think it's time to end the video here. Holy crap. I already have a feeling that this th this story is going to be pretty creepy and dark and whatnot. Because it is an interesting setting, right? I in an aquarium. Like, there's probably not that many stories about aquariums. Let alone creepy or like, quote unquote, horror stories in a sense. So, it's a pretty interesting setting. And the, the thing that immediately pops out to me from this game, at least from this visual novel in particular. Is that normally with a lot of visual novels, like when things take place you just see the uh, you just see the background like you do in this particular scene but you see it for a very long time but in this one for for example if they just even move to a slightly different location or anything the background changes very frequently so it gives you a more feeling uh, or a sense of feeling that you know exactly where they are and where everything takes place Rather than just, you know, one background is just like, yeah, they're in town right now and that sort of thing. So that's something that immediately sort of pops out for me. So that's nice. As well as, as strangely as the characters that were on screen sometimes were moving, it may, I mean, it looked really, really unhuman to me. But still, it's kind of a nice bonus thingy, I guess. Because then you sort of get the feeling, oh, that's what she's doing. She's trying to interact with the other person now by wobbling over to her but yeah anyway let's end the video here thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next video i'm pretty sure it's gonna be scary not sure if it's gonna be in the next video but i guess we'll find out won't we all right peace